ways to make a living. White collar, gray flannel. I'm off it. I mean, this is man's work. Sweat, dirt, hearty appetite, blue skies overhead, smell of fresh air from the stockyard. You give it real snob appeal. Ha. <laughs> well, there's something about a new hunk of road that says, go, go, go to my betabolish. My humanities professor used to say, human survival depends on modification and control of our environment. Man is by nature an industrious creature, always building better mousetraps. Well, in the survival department, I'm an expert. Where I come from, the mice build better mice. Look out. Hey, man, you're holding up the traffic. Come on, come on, turn it into the grease monkeys. that kind of energy in the right direction, maybe we get this project finished on time. And uh, see if you can have someone get that loader into the grease monkeys. They tell me who was the character with the status symbol. Is that the uh, boss man's favorite uncle? That was the boss man, John Rados. He's probably cut more dirt out of this country than any other man living. All by himself with his little loader. Hmm? Uh, don't let that fool you. He's a great old man, self-made. He still likes to push his rakes around and keep in touch with these men. In my book, he can't do any wrong. Now, you two got any experience beside troublemaking? No, we're just here to make your life miserable. Now listen, sonny, just get one thing straight. Cool now. it, cool it. Friends of the family, big. his truck last? Smuggled gin doing prohibition? Could be. He's for progress and against expenditure. Well, he's building roads, not running for governor. I'll tell him you said so. Hey, uh, I'm no mechanic, but maybe I can help. It's all yours. All I expect is a good first gear and a little zots now and then.
Hi. Hi. Who is he? Rados Jr. Send me to the showers. What do you suppose she is? You ever hear of Nefertiti? Yeah, she runs a pizza house in Dallas. The wife of an Egyptian pharaoh. I saw a head of her once. Just stood and stared at it for an hour. Flipped. Well, why don't you just stay here and look? You don't speak Egyptian. But my language is universal. What would you say to joining me in a bar of Hazri? I don't think I understand. Well, Hindu is as close as I can come to Egyptian. He's trying to impress you with his worldliness. Well, why Egyptian? I'm Serbian. Well, your eyes, your mouth, the line of your face, it's Nefertiti in the flesh. Well, without my white robe and my hair showing, the Egyptians would have considered me little more than a barbarian. Don't knock it. In my old neighborhood, that was a very high-class word. He's coming over, Ara, wants to see you. You've met my sister. Sister? I'm really beginning to appreciate this family. I'm Todd Stiles. You're still wet. Occupational hazard. You could collect workman's compensation. I already have. Thank you. With pleasure, Princess. Wouldn't it be easier to give me my own account? Then I would never see you. Isn't it enough? You can have more. It's fine. Two things a man has to know how to do these days. Write and shovel dirt. But, Ara, I thought maybe we would have lunch together. Some other time, Papa. I'll be home for supper. Bye. Nice meeting you. I hope your compensation was satisfactory. You too. My house, supper, tonight. I beg your pardon? My house, 8 o'clock, supper. I don't dig you, Mr. Rattus. Our work day ends at 5 o'clock. Are you going to turn down a free meal just to eat in one of those greasy spoons downtown? I have many of my men come to my home for supper. They all feel it is an honor. I do all the cooking myself. Very fine Serbian food. All you can eat. Well? Okay. <laughs> In the old days, there weren't no such thing as engineers. Carried the plans around in your hip pocket. Now you've got project engineers, office engineers, greenhouse engineers. That's the trouble with the world. Too much thinking, not enough doing. Isn't that right, Sonny? Well, everybody's got their own style, but I guess you got a point there. My father has a point in everything he does. For every cause has an effect, Mr. Rados, good or bad. Uh, there's something to be said for analysis and preparation. Oh, then you say it, huh? Because <laughs> you educate me. I just be content with success. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going out for some air. Yeah, I think I'll get some air, too. Great quick, Mr. Rados. Why don't you uh, tell Mr. Rados about the time you almost got pressed into the asphalt man interchange job in L.A.? Depends on what you see. I'm looking at you. Night has a thousand eyes. All of them are looking at me. 
What do they see? A nice young Serbian girl eating crow with a silver spoon. <laughs> I hear a sour note in that song. I didn't ask you to listen. Well, I'm a music lover. I'd like to hear the rest of it. And I didn't invite you to dinner. Look, correct me if I'm wrong, but your father said it was an honor to break bread with him. He says a lot of things. I think you do, too. Good night. You like that, huh? It is a Burgundian gargoyle. A water spout. Beautiful. Symbol of death, isn't it? I don't know about symbols. It is a piece of wood, that is all. You said you wanted to talk to us. It wasn't about gargoyles. About hands. Hands that can do what mine cannot. We're listening. My, my daughter is a moody girl. You have seen that. She was sick for a long time. She, she feels badly toward me for some things that I have done. Well, what does that uh, got to do with us? Well, she seems to like you boys. <laughs> and my book. She has been different with you than with the others. This time she came to supper. I, I still don't get it. Take her out. Show her a good time. Help her to laugh again, to forget. I pay all expenses. I make it worth your while. There could be a good future for both of you in my company. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, do I read you right? You want to buy your daughter a playmate? You, you could do worse, no? Come on, Todd. No, wait! I broke up an affair that was bad for her. I, I was wrong. I, I know that now. But she can't get over it. Can't forget. You're not gonna do it. Get out, Nick! I'm not gonna let you do it! You don't tell me what you're going to let me do! Does it? I have enough! Do you have to trade up, too? Nick! You can't buy her back, Papa. You don't know anything. Now you get out of here with your insolence! Thanks for the dinner. It was a real honor. I don't know, I just don't like it. It just came on too strong for someone who's just sorry. It's old world pride. But to buy entertainment for a girl who could call her shots with almost any cat in town? That kind of old world stuff goes pretty far back. Well, maybe in his clumsy way, he's just trying to soften her up. Look, he may be Mr. Success Incorporated, but I've seen that look on too many lost souls pitching for a decent meal. Panic written all over their faces, but they don't want food. They want salvation, or a bottle, or any kind of painkiller that might be handy. Well, I don't want to get involved in somebody else's misery. Then don't. Me, I wouldn't mind squiring her around at no charge. Hello. I think it was inexcusable of the two of you to leave without saying good night. We thought you went to bed. I never go to bed before three or four. Where's Buzz? Shh. He is nocturnal like us. Oh. Would you mind waking him? Isn't the odd man out? I'm sure you'll find someone to keep you company. Uh, the Lord High Executioner couldn't have done a cleaner job. I came to see you. Well, look, uh, come on in. You come out. So? Found you interesting and wanted to see you again. Look, you cut me up pretty good. You want to chew up the pieces? Let's forget the sour notes. I feel like singing sweet and pure. You want to take a ride? Let's walk. 
It's a slow kind of a night. <laughs> okay, let's walk. <laughs> Do you think the moon influences people? I don't know. I never thought about it. You don't want to walk. Sure, why not? I embarrassed you by coming here. <laughs> I don't embarrass easy. Have you ever been to Greece? No. You remind me of a boy I met there, in an amphitheater in Epidaurus. After Mother died, we spent the summer there painting the landscapes. Oh, it was beautiful. No ugliness. Not in line, color, form, or sentiment. You all right? I shouldn't have come here. I shouldn't have bothered you. Now, that girl looks like somebody uh, you didn't want to get involved with. Yeah, there is a resemblance. How'd you know she was going to be here? I called her from the motel this morning. Why do you paint clouds yellow? Because they're lemons. <laughs> what do you think of it? Well, I like the way it kind of uh, jumps out at you. Very unsatisfactory answer. Well, it, it does something for me. It gives me a good feeling. Here. <laughs> no. Art isn't just a source of pleasure. That's like describing love as just a source of advantage. Isn't it? Art is imagination, and imagination is faith. See? Not exactly. I'm kind of a realist. The painter is like Moses, seeing God in the burning bush instead of the gardener burning leaves. Look. It says a million things if you let it. Amoebas, earthquakes, warm summer days, Rainbow Dragon. There was a man, a painter, and all nature was a work of art to him. And one day, a seagull flew into his line of vision, and he worried that the seagull would get his wings all smeared with paint. If only I could have that kind of faith. You're kind of smearing my wings with paint. It's very becoming. Why'd you run away last night? It was late. I was being foolish. You said I reminded you of someone else. I don't want to talk about past things, or dark things, or unhappy things. I want to talk about life, and joy, and strength, and hope. Those are my gods. I want to worship them. OK. Let's wish it. I like you. I like your face. And I like your eyes. They're very clear and very knowing. for water skiing. You're busy. You know, a lot of your problems disappear if you just get out and batter your head against a cold surf. With some people, it's money that solves their problems. They'll do anything for it. Then you'll get this shade right in there. 
And if you want it lighter, you had... Hi. You said you wanted to see the Modigliani exhibit this afternoon. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's okay. I, I got a buddy that's waiting to go with water skiing. I'll meet you in the car where you go then. Okay. Bye. Get the rest of my stuff, will you, Nick? You're a pretty ugly boy, you know that? You're off base. I don't read you. I thought you'd back away like the others my father picked up. But I should have known. You grow up in the streets like an animal, you think like an animal. You're off base, Sonny. I'm on your back, friend. And that's where I'm gonna stay till you clear out and leave her alone. You got it all figured out, huh? Whatever my father tries to do, crude as it is, it's out of love, not profit. Now I'll tell you once, simple and clear. You stay away from Ara, or I'll put you away. You can almost hear the loom. Ara, what is it? What's the matter? It's called the Zealandaris. The weavers. Do you see the tapestry in the background? The young Greek girl named Arachne is having a spinning contest with a goddess. That's where Mother got my name. She used to tell Nick and me the story when we were children. So long ago. She was such a lovely, gentle woman. So full of life. Come on, I'll take you home. Arachne won the contest. The goddess got so angry, so jealous that... so jealous that she turned Arachne into a spider. Turned her into a spider so that she would be the eternal spinner. Spinning our fate for us. Hold me. Everything's all right. It's all right. Mother. Oh, Mother. How soft and tender her voice was in the stillness. 
But you see, little Ara, my darling, the truth is that no one spins our fate for us. God says that whether life is a shroud or a cocoon, every father's daughter must weave her own. But that isn't true. You see that, don't you? The spider. I can't stop it. I can't stop it, but... <laughs> I think I love you. It's me, Todd. Hi, what's up? Nothing. Nothing at all. I just felt like calling. You what? I'll see you in a while.
be on your back. And I told you you were out of line. Shut up! You come off awful strong from up there. Well, like my old man says, the tools that can do what the hands can't. My hands weren't made for striking out against the world. I'm one of the lonely ones. A wanderer inside my head. Playboy. A poet. A part-time brother and a fine grade foreman. Nothing! I can't escape that. Not like Ara. I know there's something the matter with him. Dying at 24 years old is very wrong. How do you like the deal now, huh? Go on, take her out. Show her a good time. She hasn't got long. My mother died of the same thing. Clinical, mechanical voices. Hands and tools digging into her head, but only succeeding in cutting away a year. A year she might have had to toy gently with her antiques. Dreams of lost youth. I was gonna have that year. Free and clear to spend it any way she wants it. And not degraded by a drunken old man's crude attempt to buy her happiness in the arms of a tramp. If she's gonna die, then let her do it with some kind of dignity. Are you through? Only if you are. Well, I'm not. You stink! Sitting up there on your self-righteous two-bit tank of misery. The way I understand the world, nobody's got the right to tell anybody else how to live or die. So you go right ahead and, and jam down on that nervous foot of yours, because you're not telling me anything. Your son, he told me. It hurts to know, doesn't it? Supposing she had found out by mistake, don't you think your lying and cheating would have hurt her more? She won't find out! Look. You invited me into this. I didn't ask to be into it. But now I'm involved. And I care what happens to Ara. And I say, stop calling all the shots for her. She must not be told. And you're taking the choice out of her hands. Look, I'm her father. It's my right. Nobody's got that right. She's soft. Soft earth. Like her mother. She knew. My Oliveira knew. 
days before the operation, crying like a child, knowing that death was coming, she went to pieces. Is that what you're afraid of? That Ara doesn't have the courage? That she won't be able to face it? I couldn't stand to go through that again. You couldn't. Well, just who are you protecting? Ara or yourself? Your daughter is a human being, Mr. Rados. A woman with heart and feelings. And she's got a right to know there's something wrong with her. She was only a baby when her mother died. She, she thinks it's just a pressure that will go away. They operated on your wife. They must have thought she had a chance. Why not Ara? Not enough of a chance. Not enough. Oh, and what are you and that son of yours? Some kind of gods? Life and death, and you make all the decisions. Don't judge me, boy. I believe them before those, those doctors, those engineers with their big words that nobody understands. If, if I cut too deep into a mountain, I can fill it. I can reinforce it. But then, what can they do? Can they bring a wife and a daughter back to life? Can they give a man back the chance to know them, to love them? I need time. Time. too self-critical, but I hate them. I'm a, I'm a miserable pain. Let me see them. No, you can't. Please let me see them, Nick. They're ugly and crude. I don't want anyone to see them. They're mine. Aren't they? resting comfortably. Don't you think you've prolonged this sufficiently, Mr. Rados? I'd like to make arrangements to put her in the hospital. Well, I'll be in my office. When she wakes up, I will tell her. Then she can decide if she wants to do it. 
I had a nightmare. You used to come to me at night, so long ago, crying, frightened. Those were sweet moments, Papa. I told you there was nothing in the dark to hurt you. No ghosts, no goblins. I wasn't really frightened, Papa. I just wanted to be near you. I know that they were only the things you see in dreams. Like spiders. I'm not frightened now, Papa. Nick didn't have to burn my paintings. I think I knew what was coming all along. Death isn't a spider. Or a terrible old man with a scythe. Just a gentle, smiling woman, like Mother, waiting somewhere. Huh? huh? Father, what well, I have. I have an operation like mother's. Yes, Sara, but only if you want. I, I cut out their strength, your mama's, Nikki's. And then I dug into your heart. Always the blade. Cutting, digging. It's all right, Papa. Ara, I, I wanted to tell you that I loved you. But the word, only my hands and my money could talk. I, I even tried to buy someone to give you back the love that I took away. Buy someone? What do you mean by that, Papa? Uh, I, I would have done anything. Buzz? I only wanted you to be happy again. To smile at me. Oh, Papa! <laughs> Will you listen to me, please? How much did he pay you? I don't know what he said, but you got it all wrong. Don't lie to me! 
pity. Uh, apologies would be better than to go on lying. Ara, I'm here because I want to be, and no other reason. Do you love me? Can you say that, too? No, I, I can't say it, but... Who around here has given me any time to think about love? What do you think love is? Something like an old coat you throw around your shoulders just because it happens to get cold? Please, go away. Ara, those gods of yours, life, joy, strength, hope, they're my gods too, remember. Help me, boss. Help me find them again. Ara, look, look. It says a million things if you'll only let it. Earthquakes, dragon rainbows, warm summer days. And the papers? This has been a Screen Gems film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.